How you doing? So how do you balance all this out? Going to the Super Bowl for the first time, knowing there's distraction, hearing what everybody said, yet keeping that laser focus getting ready for the 49 Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is in these first few days trying to get everything settled as far as getting family and friends at the game and everything like that and getting them the tickets squared away, hotel rooms and stuff like that. And so that now going into the week, I can really focus in on the game plan and doing everything. And obviously, I've already watched film Monday, Tuesday, and stuff like that. But uh, getting my family squared away first, and then now I can really just focus in on, on doing what it takes in order to win it. How much are you leaning on Coach Reed and players like Teresa to, because they've actually been there, what preparation is like, and then the whole experience? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, really talking to those guys, seeing what the, what the week's like first off. I mean, obviously, we have a schedule of how we're doing everything, but seeing what extra free time I think I can pick up in order to, to either study more or get guys together to get some more work in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, just using those guys and their experiences to really have an understanding of what we're going into and what to expect. How, what you you first allow, how much time did you allow yourself to celebrate the, the win on Sunday? And it's a bigger win than the regular hit of the yeah, I mean, I think just, just that night, I mean, just kind of with the family and friends and, and some of the teammates just kind of just in, enjoying it. But then going in on Monday, we, we, we got right back onto the, the 49ers. And the good thing about, about this is we know who we're playing, so you can kind of use this extra week and really focus in on one team uh, so that you can prepare yourself in the, in the best way possible. Patrick, what do you see at first glance? Maybe you got a chance to watch the NFC Championship game on the replay or uh, film coming in. What, do you, what are your first impressions about the 49ers and that defense? Yeah, I mean, I think they're, I mean, obviously they have a ton of playmakers on the defense, uh, defensive line, linebackers, and, and secondary, where they have guys that have had experience and they have young guys that are super talented. And so you can see that they can, that the young guys have really grown as the years went on, as they've learned from other guys around. And uh, I mean, they're very sound in what they do and the coverages that they play. And so for us, it's about just having to execute at a high level and knowing it's going to be a great challenge on every single play. Hey, kind of, yeah. Shot a couple of TV commercials with Aaron Rodgers, right? So. Mm -hmm. Do you have you already, or will you call him and say, hey, you know, what do you think? What what do you see when you were out there? Can you steal some ideas after he just played it? Yeah, I haven't even even thought about that. I might need to, but uh, no, it's a. Uh... I do have a relationship uh, where I, I, I can I can talk to him and text him and do stuff like that, but I, I'll probably just focus in on what we what we do what we do here and what Coach Reed uh, game plans because I know he's we've done a good he done a good job of game planning all year long. Patrick, what was that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's – you can spend too much time watching film, but I, I think you can spend too much time trying to dissect every single thing. Uh, I think there's times where, you, where you're playing a team uh, that like, like them that they, they play their certain coverages and they play them really well uh, that you just have to go out there and execute. I mean, that's the biggest thing. The plays are going to be there. Uh, you're going to have chances in the game to have opportunities, but they're not going to be a ton. So when you do get those opportunities, just make sure you execute at a high level. Any other championships you played and even like in your youth level that you could – kind of fall back on, even if it's like even a T-ball championship or anything of that nature that you could fall back on? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've played in championship games growing up, but uh, this is definitely a, a bigger one, uh, the, probably the biggest one that, that's around. And so for, for, for me, it's just about, like, like we said, talking to Coach Reed, talking to Suggs, all these guys that have been in these games, getting a feel for it, getting a feel for having to run out of the tunnel and then wait around a little bit before you, before you get going and kind of building and kind of containing your emotions and uh, being able to get there and really just play football when it comes down to it. Patrick, can you describe how Andy kind of emotionally connects with you and the team? It seems he's able to inspire but also calm um, you. I, I wonder how that, how that works. Yeah, I think it's just – he, he's the same person every single day, same person if we're, if we're winning or if we're losing. Uh, he's going to have that same fire, but at the same time still being able to teach in the moment and, and really get the best out of every single person. I think that's a, that's a huge thing. And uh, you've seen it these last few weeks when we're down, and you've seen it when, when we've been up in games. We still have that same mentality of taking it one play at a time and trying to be great for that play. And one of the parts of that, I mean, his own connection with you directly, I was sort of joking with him the other day about if you guys are completing each other's sentences that you actually are. Um, have you caught on to that experience? Or did you, do you remember that happening a few times? Uh, yeah, it's happened before. Uh, Matt Moore has a great story about it, one of his first weeks here. But, uh, no, it, it's uh, it's just being on the same page uh, in the game, knowing what he's going to call before he's going to call it, uh, having the same feel for the game, and then and then making sure we're communicating. Uh, that, that stuff that Coach Reed does a great job with, as, as well as uh, Coach Bien and me and Coach Kafka. Does he still do impressions of you? 
yeah, every once in a while he'll he'll throw it out there still. So he he, he keeps the 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 room uh, alive, I guess you would say, and making sure that you know that uh, he can still throw a joke here here and there, even during a week like this. Patrick, on the touchdown to, to Sammy, it, it seemed like you were evading pressure right in your face, and somehow still managed to, to look down the field. It's just like incredibly rare. Is that something that you've been, always been able to do, or is that something maybe you've worked upon? Like, what's the key to that? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that I've always done is whenever I'm I'm scrambling, keep my eyes downfield. I've never been the the fastest guy, so I, I've always want to get to guys like Tyreek and McColl and Travis and all these other guys and Sammy. And so f for me, actually on that play, I, I, I left the pocket a little too early just because they did kind of a stunt with the D-line and I thought I could run for it. And as I saw it developing, I knew I kind of had to reset in the pocket. And uh, as I did that, I got back through my reads and Sammy was a guy I was going to go to anyways. And he, he did a good job of fighting through a, a holding penalty and getting downfield. And so I was able to get the ball to him in, in enough time that he can score a touchdown. Patrick, you've been here for a few years now. That, so you haven't been around this like 50 years like the city's been <coughs> for this to happen. How do you guys guard against winning on Sunday not being the destination? Did you have one more game and not let that part creep in? Because there's such a celebration right here because it's been so long. Yeah, I mean, obviously we celebrated that that night, um, but uh, I think the mentality of these guys in this locker room is that that we want to get the the big one. We want to not fall short. We want to make sure that we're going to Super Bowl and that we can win it, uh, and and not regret not preparing or doing whatever it takes to do that. And uh, I think as with the guys in this locker room, we're going to take advantage of every single day. Uh, it's, a, it's a long build uh, for these next week and a half or whatever it is, but we're going to build every single day of just taking advantage of it and, and hopefully getting there and playing our best football and trying to find a way to win the football game. When do you think it's going to hit you that you're actually there when, be when you, you know, get off the plane <coughs> Sunday or open at night at, at the Marlins Park that we are here in the Super Bowl? You know, get, get the chance to actually enjoy it before, obviously, you have to split your mind to get back to work. Yeah, I think I think when I uh, get on the plane and it's snowing and then get off and, it, and I'm sweating, I'll, I'll know I'm there. <laughs> but following up on that, literally the last three months you all have played in, in cold weather, maybe outside of mm -hmm. Nashville. What's going to be like now? You know, kickoff should be about 70 degrees when you all play for the championship. Yeah, I mean it's 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 crazy. Coach Reed's been talking about it since the playoffs st uh, started, staying in warm weather shape, and I think he he says something about it after the game. And so guys have been getting extra running and getting extra stuff in to make sure they're ready uh, to be in this opportunity and be in this this spot. And so obviously we know going from snow and to, to 70, 80, 80 degrees is going to be different. Uh, but we're going to make sure that we prepare ourselves uh, physically and mentally to go out there and be able to play a full four quarters or whatever it takes. Patrick, against the, the Broncos, you're mic'd up and. Mm -hmm. How much have you tried to emulate his game, just the respect that you have and that, that you talked about between players like Lamar and Sean? Yeah, I mean, I watch, I watch everybody in the league and try to see stuff that guys are doing. Uh, I think you do that as a, as a quarterback when you're, if you're watching a lot of these great players. And so for me, I, I try not to, I know I can't juke like Lamar or do stuff like that. Uh, but I, I feel like I can't extend plays when I, when I watch similar opponents, like I will watch with Lamar playing the 49ers and seeing how he could extend plays, then I know that that's some stuff that I could take away, but I obviously can't run at the, the same agility or speed that he can. We talk a lot, a about, more, guys. Talk a lot about Andy uh, getting a Super Bowl, but Travis has been at this for seven years. Uh, just what's the sense that you get of just how bad he wants this, given the success of his brother and, and just going through Alex and so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean – Travis, he's played a, a lot of great football in his career, uh, and I mean, I know he's super excited to play in the in, in the Super Bowl and get a chance to play for it. Uh, obviously, he watched his brother do it and saw how, how much excitement and stuff that was. And so, I know it's going to be an exciting moment. But I think the biggest thing for all of us is just just being who we are, and that's stuff that we preach every single day. Is just we we take advantage of every single rep. We let our personality show, and uh, we try to find a way to win the game in any way possible. Patrick, what was the Matt Moore story? Yeah, he just – it was one of the stories you got, you got to ask him. It's about how I completed Coach Reed's sentences one of the first weeks here, and, and he knew that that's when we were all kind of on the same wavelength. Well, from, from your perspective, just what kind of emotional lift was it to have Chris in uniform and then to see him play the rest of the Yeah, I mean, he, the way he's able to disrupt uh, what the offense is trying to do, uh, either it's sacks or just getting in the backfield and setting up for someone else to make a play, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a special football player. And so for us uh, to have him back, him, him knowing that he's battling through injury, injury and, he, and he was still going out there and giving his best effort every single play, uh, this, this bye week will let him get fully healthy and then we'll be able to have him for a, a, a huge game and be able to have all our weapons. Good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.